Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and I'm going to tell you three things you should never do with your semi-truck. That's right. A semi-truck, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a tractor trailer. It looks just like this. Some people say semi-truck, some people say tractor trailer, but when you search, hey, how to buy a truck, if you just search truck, you're usually going to get topics like this, which is pickup truck. So if you put in how to buy a semi-truck or semi-trucks for sale, then you're going to get all of these listings right over here. And today, if you do have a semi-truck, or maybe if you're looking to get one, I'm going to give you three things that you should never do. That's right, three things that you should never do with your semi-truck itself. So, let's talk about thing number one that most people do not know. A lot of people kind of get into their cars and they put the key in and they turn the car on right away. All right? In a semi-truck, you should never do that. Technically, in any diesel vehicle, you should never do that. A lot of people kind of get spoiled in their car and now they don't even have a key, they just have that kind of push start thing. So that kind of gets you into the wrong habit. The proper way to actually start and start running the engine of a semi-truck is going to be this. Thing number one is going to make sure you put the key in the on position, right? Let the whole the gauges kind of work. Thing number two is going to be make sure that the transmission is neutral, whether it's an automatic or manual transmission. And thing number three is going to be make sure that the both parking brakes are pulled out, right? If you do it in that order, that means you'll always be performing a safe start and make sure that you last uh, the engine, the starter, and the batteries all last longer. Because when you actually turn the engine on, the computer starts to work, and depending on how cold it is, the actual diesel and oil starts to heat up little by little simply because of the electrical energy that's going through the engine, the oil, the motor, and all that stuff. And then once everything's good and your gauges are all lit up, that's when you put the clutch all the way down if you have a clutch, and then that's when you turn the key to the on position. If all you do is turn and crank it up, oh my god, you are going to be putting such a strain on that starter, such a strain on that battery, and you might wear it out, especially if it's in the winter time. Thing number two that you should never do, and most people have no idea, is pull on that trailer handbrake valve. So if you don't know what that is, it looks a few different ways, but usually this is what it looks like right over here. It's going to be on your dash, or it could be underneath your steering wheel itself. And what that does is that actually engages the service brakes of the trailer itself, right? So tractor trailers or semi-trucks actually have two brakes systems. We have what we call a service brake system, and we call an emergency or a parking brake system. The service brake system is what works when you press on the foot brake itself. The actual parking brake system is what works when you're actually putting in park or you pull out the emergency brakes, which is the same thing. So that being said, the, hand, the trailer handbrake valve is what engages the service brakes of the trailer only. So as you're driving, you should never pull on that trailer handbrake valve because all it's going to do is it's going to lock up your trailer brakes and now you're going to start skidding all over the place and you're going to lose complete control of the semi truck itself. That being said, you should press on the foot brake just like normal, and that's going to start locking up all your brakes, both on the tractor and on the trailer, and you'll be good to go. All right? So, and now you might be asking, well, why do they even have a semi-trailer uh, as a handbrake if I can't use it in the semi-truck? Well, the main reason to, they have that is so you can test to make sure that the service brakes of the trailer are working properly. That means you're going to release both parking brakes, pull up a little bit in a parking lot pull on the handbrake, make sure that your trailer brakes do lock up and you're good to go, right? That's all that really is for. Now, the third and final thing, drum roll please, is going to be watch a following distance. So when it comes to following distance, that means it's the distance between you or the front of your vehicle, the front of your semi-truck, and the vehicle or the object in front of you. Now you must understand, Driving a tractor trailer or a semi-truck is going to be a lot longer to stop than it is in a car, right? A semi-truck is going to, can be over 75 feet and it can take about 300 feet to com come to a complete stop. Which means if you're tailgating a bunch of cars right in front of you, you're going to have an issue because they're going to be able to stop much quicker than you can and that means you are going to wind up in their front seat, right? And unfortunately, you have 80,000 pounds that are going to be carrying you, which means it's going to be a lot harder for you to stop. Now, there's a whole formula to kind of figure out exactly how, how much distance you need depending on where you are. All right? And I'll kind of give you a brief overview of it. We have other videos on our channel. So when it comes to following distance, it's just like this. For every 10 feet of your vehicle, you need one second of following distance, which means if you're a 70-foot vehicle, 
you're going to want a minimum of seven seconds between you and the car in front of you. Now how do you count seconds? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. All right, so that's how you count the seconds itself. Now, there's one extra piece to that. If you're going faster than 40 miles an hour, you want to add one second to it. So if you're driving a 70 foot vehicle, you're going to do seven seconds and you're going 50 miles an hour, that means you want to add one more second, which means you want to have at least eight seconds of following distance in front of you. And that gives you enough time to kind of react, stop, move to the right, and kind of control the vehicle itself, right? So those are the main things to worry about when it comes to driving a semi-truck. And those are the three things you should never do when it comes to driving a semi-truck itself. Now there's a whole bunch more of things that you should and should not do. In order to figure out exactly what that is, you have to go to school. And why, what school should you go to? Well, I'm a little bit biased, but this school right over here. CDL Driving Academy is the best truck driving school in the entire country. We have, we're probably the only school that can guarantee that you walk away with your CDL license. And how those courses works is we're going to give you over 100 hours of training, plus unlimited tries at the road test itself, which means you're going to keep going for the test until you pass at no extra cost to you, and that's how we can guarantee it. We're also open up seven days a week, which means we can work around any kind of training schedule that you do have. We offer lifetime job placement. So it's our job to help you find a job up until the day you die. So if you want more information on exactly how to get a CDL license, how the process works, how much it's going to cost, all you got to do is give our team a call at 908-525-3609 or check out our website at cdldrivingacademy.com. Again, that's cdldrivingacademy.com. Thanks and have a fantastic day. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.